Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning at, on GMSA, a missing teen from the Dallas area has been found alive over a thousand miles away. What authorities believe happened and a warning to parents plus. Fallout continues after two banks fail, leaving some scrambling to get their money. Coming up, we'll have more on the big picture economic impact. Let's look out there with live cam. We're starting off cold, well, or cool, I guess, at 52 degrees. We're going to be checking in with Mike right now to see our ever-changing forecast. And we continue on with spring break 2023 for most folks. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, March 14th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a good spring break so far. But I guess if you are, you maybe you're asleep. Maybe. It, it's <laughs> most likely that you are. But if you are up and watching, we thank you for that. It is clear and cool this morning, no doubt about that. Mike Ostrays joins us now with a roundup of how temperatures are looking before daybreak. Well, this is about normal, mm -hmm. you know, right in the low 50s. Yesterday was just about where we should be. We actually stayed a little bit below normal for the first time in many, many days and get ready for a roller coaster. I've been talking about this and wow, it's going to be quite a ride, especially as we go in toward the weekend. First of all, this morning, yeah, grab a jacket and you may want to keep it handy throughout the rest of the day. We're at 53 right now, mid 40s hill country, and we still got very, very dry air out there, so that's going to come into play. There is the chance for maybe a stray shower here or there today. Just a little one popping up, but once again, the air is really dry, so anything that does fall will probably evaporate before it ever reaches the ground. That's not going to be the situation in the next couple of days. More on that coming up, though. Oak is on the high side, although it did drop down from the previous day's reading. And once again, we've got a whole grocery list of allergens out there this morning and throughout the rest of today. Again, the mention of a shower Really dry air, not going to amount to anything if you see one of these sprinkles, and it's going to stay cool. We're going to have a lot more in the way of clouds as well. Yes, it was beautiful, just about halfway moon out there this morning that was just rising, and uh, clouds are going to continue to thicken up throughout the day. Mostly cloudy skies by later on 64 degrees, and then plenty of clouds overnight tonight. Tomorrow, we get even warmer. Then Thursday, we get even, well, basically hotter then get ready because that big front's going to move through and it is going to be a doozy of a front. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you very much. Topping your morning headlines, new fallout after two U.S. banks collapsed this past weekend. Right now, the feds are taking emergency action as people scramble to get their cash. As ABC's Lindsay Watts reports, President Biden is telling Americans in his words that their money is safe. Customers of Silicon Valley and signature banks lining up to grab their cash. Yeah, no, I'm going to clear it out and uh, learn my lesson and I'm not going to put the money all in one uh, place uh, like I did here. So I'm going to uh, spread it around. The Treasury, FDIC and Federal Reserve have taken emergency steps to guarantee all deposits from the failed banks are paid back in full, even those over the federally insured amount of $250,000. President Biden telling Americans they can have confidence in the system. Americans can rest assured that our banking system is safe. Your deposits are safe. Let me also assure you we will not stop at this. We'll do whatever is needed. But despite efforts to ease fears, people are on edge. Stocks of some other regional banks plummeted Monday, worrying those customers. I rushed over here and I withdrew all my money, except for one dollar. Experts say the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank was partially triggered by the aggressive interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve. Rising interest rates was one of the biggest problems that bit them two ways. It's because the bank invested heavily in government bonds two years ago. And as the feds raised rates, bond prices fell and the value of Silicon Valley's investments plummeted. The Federal Reserve Board is now launching a review of the bank's supervision and regulation, promising a thorough and transparent process. The White House also pushing for tougher regulations on small banks, which Congress rolled back during the Trump administration. I'm going to ask Congress and the banking regulators to strengthen the rules for banks to make it less likely this kind of bank failure would happen again. The latest inflation report is due out this morning, and it's expected to show that the inflation rate dropped to 6% last month, lower than January, but still high. Some economists predict the Fed will think twice about another big rate hike in light of the bank failures. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. His parents... They've got to wise up and see that the dangers to these kids, it just continues to go on. 
This morning, a sheriff's warning to parents after deputies found a missing North Texas girl alive in North Carolina. The 13 year old was found in a locked shed on Friday. Investigators say the shed is on property that belongs to the 34 year old suspect. He's accused of meeting the girl on social media and luring her to his car. The man is now facing several charges, including child abduction, human trafficking and rape. The girl is back with her family in the Dallas area. Also here in Texas, felony fraud charges against the former CEO of Bluebell are being dropped. The charges were related to the 2015 deadly listeria outbreak that killed three people in Kansas. Bluebell's former CEO, Paul Cruz, was originally charged with six counts of wire fraud and one count of conspiracy, which carries up to a 20-year prison sentence. His lawyers argued the fraud charges came too late under the statute of limitation, so Cruz instead agreed to pay a $100,000 fine. Meanwhile, California is about to get hit again with flooding rains and high winds. Over 18 million people in the Golden State are already under flood alerts. Rescue operations are underway after a levee breach in Monterey County trapped residents in flood, rising floodwaters. The National Weather Service says heavy rainfall combined with snowmelt could fuel more flooding in the coming days. Right now, it is 436, 52 degrees. Still ahead, a bottle that you've probably seen a lot on Instagram. It's being recalled. We're going to look at why, plus a parent alert for car seats. And up next, Corpus Christi Islander Hoops is looking to add a little madness to this year's NCAA tournament, a preview of tonight's first four matchup. And let's take a look at the roads with Trans Sky looking out there at I-10 at the Y where things are moving right now. Also looking pretty good right there at I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. We're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos in the next half hour. And outside with live camp again, it's clear and cool to start the day, but Mike says it will warm up later on by how much. We'll talk about that coming up a little later in the newscast. After five seasons in New Orleans with the Saints edge rusher Marcus Davenport is headed to Minnesota to play for the Vikings. NFL sources say the Stevens High School and UTSA product is signing a one year $13 million deal with the Vikes. Davenport played 15 games last season, started nine and recorded 29 tackles and recorded half a sack. He has 21 and a half sacks in his career. Saints drafted him with the 14th overall pick back in 2018. Moving on to the Spurs, Zach Collins has embraced his role as San Antonio's starting center and it's showing in his production. Zach took over the job after the Spurs traded Jakob Pertl to the Raptors and it gives the Spurs a different look at the five because he can stretch the floor and shoot threes. Sunday night against the Thunder, Zach had 23 points, 11 rebounds for his ninth career double-double. The 25-year-old says he is loving it. It's fun, man. It's fun. It's fun to be in a starting role, playing all those minutes, you know. If, if human beings couldn't get tired, man, I'd I love to play the whole game, you know, so uh, no, nah, it's just fun, man. You know, I, I wish we were winning more games this season, but it's definitely a fun experience. It's good for, you know, me going forward in my career just to have that opportunity and to have that responsibility every night to be ready to go from the jump. Um, so it, it's been fun. So looking ahead, the Spurs are hosting the Orlando Magic tonight at 7. Jeremy and Keldon are questionable to play. Trey Jones, Malachi Branham, and Romeo Langford are all out. Turning to college hoops, March Madness is here for the second straight season. The Islanders of A&M, Corpus Christi made the field after winning the Southland Conference Championship. Wagner High School great Islanders senior guard Jalen Jackson was asked what it took to get back this season. We have a lot of returners from last year, so like we knew what it take, took to win. We knew what it took to uh, get back to the tournament. Um, so just having that continuity and then being able to put it all together and make a run in March, that's how we, that's how we got it done. We won conference, and then we won the conference championship, so we get the bid. So now we got to go win a game or two in March Madness tournament. Head coach Steve Lutz and his 16th seed at Islanders will face number 16 Southeast Missouri State tonight at 540 in the South Region first four game. The winner will play in the 64 team NCAA tournament. The Islanders of Texas A&M Corpus Christi are favored by four points. Good luck, guys. Yeah, good luck. Time now 442 and 52 degrees for now. Just had a recall for a water bottle that you have probably seen all over social media. A look at what's inside that could cause serious health problems. Plus a man in Ohio attacked by his own zebra. How it unfolded and why police had to get involved in today's GMA First Look. 
And welcome back. It's 445 this morning. A 72 year old man in Ohio is recovering after being attacked by a zebra from a herd he owns. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, zebra attack. A man lucky to survive after being bitten by this zebra seen on police body cam approaching sheriff's deputies as they respond to the scene. The zebra nearly taking off his owner's arm in a shocking attack. Did he bite your arm? Did he? Oh, hell yeah. Is your arm still attached, sir? I don't think so. Deputies finding 72 year old Ronald Clifton in a fenced in field lying on the ground. We need to expose the wound just to make sure yeah, yeah, it stops the bleeding. When deputies arrived, the zebra appearing aggressive. Is there a way for you to keep him back? We're trying not to shoot him. Male zebras, especially if females are in season around, get incredibly territorial. That male was probably looking at all these things as a threat and was going to take out those threats. And we'll have much more on this scary encounter coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA first look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC yeah. News. New York. Well, this morning you see all the time people with water bottles in hand. And there's one in particular that's super popular on Instagram, the Bindle bottle. However, it is being recalled. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains the danger inside and why the bottles are being sent back. It's called the Sip and Stash, and it was once one of Oprah's favorite things. Now, Bindle is voluntarily recalling it after Consumer Reports tests found alarmingly high levels of lead in the bottom storage compartment. Lead levels were more than a thousand times what's allowed in many products. In the Bindle bottle's bottom storage compartment, there's a spot of lead solder that's sealing the different parts of the bottle together. So anything that you put into the storage compartment can potentially become contaminated with lead. That includes snack foods. Exposure to lead can increase cancer risk, cause reproductive problems, and hurt brain and nervous system development. And there's more. The tests also found some contained BPA, a chemical linked to fertility problems and certain cancers, even though the company claims the bottle to be BPA free. Bindle has said that production has been suspended and will be overhauled going forward, eliminating the presence of exposed lead anywhere. If you have a Bindle bottle, you can contact the company for a free repair kit. Now, a parent alert about car seats. Nearly 60,000 car seats are recalled, several Maxi Cosi and Safety First models. The base may detach from the vehicle seat. These were sold since May of 2020. Durrell Juvenile Group will send a new replacement base. A list of the models is on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's look at those roads again with TransSky looking over at I. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that right. Loop 410, that's not I-10. Loop 410 at Marbach Road, looking pretty good there. And also Highway 281 at San Pedro. Interesting shot right there. Yeah, yeah it's very close up. <laughs> no access report, some construction listed on part of Highway 90. That's it. Good news. Hey, St. Mary's, they're actually paving. It's been shut down the past oh, couple of that's mornings. that's great news. I know. So yes. I had to take a little detour around there, ah. right up there by Ashby. So it's go. Been a while. Yay. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, get ready this week. Things are going to be kind of all over the place. We are 92 Saturday, going to be back at the 80 Thursday. Cool today, and then the bottom mm -hmm. drops out. And I'm talking the bottom drops out. So anyway, beautiful view yesterday. Oscar, great. Yeah, super pretty sunset. Great way to end the first day of spring break. Did hit 70 yesterday. It was a really pleasant afternoon with that lower humidity. It is going to stay cooler today. We are going to have more clouds hanging around here today as well. Nice view, though, and you can see once again how the lights off right there along the horizon are very twinkly. So we've got really dry air in place, not that fuzzy look when you have all the humidity out there. 53 degrees right now, just about a normal low temperature. Grab a jacket, mid 40s hill country, very dry air. And again, this is going to come into play as far as there is the chance for a couple of sprinkles around here today, but it for most of the day, humidity is going to remain very low, so we'll have this very dry air in place. And so a lot of what may fall we're probably going to be evaporating. We had that situation yesterday as well. We are going to continue to drop down into the upper 40s this morning. We will have more clear skies or less clouds this morning, and then the clouds are going to start to thicken up. And again, there's that 10% chance for a stray little sprinkle here or there throughout the afternoon. And that's all we're going to muster is 64 degrees. So we're going to be almost 10 below normal later on this afternoon. This is going to be the coolest day of the first half of the week. Again, 
92 a couple of days ago. We've been getting cooler, 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 and then we're going to start to go up a little bit tomorrow as well as on Thursday. Here's computer model and again, a lot more clear skies this morning. Here come the clouds that move on in here. A couple of showers here and there uh, just kind of scattered about. Again, much of it is going to be evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. That's going to be the same situation then tomorrow. We'll have a couple of stray little showers scattered about here or there, not really anything of any consequence, and then more of that on Thursday. Thursday, but as we go in toward Thursday, better odds of everything reaching the ground because, well, here's the uh, dry air that's in place right now. And then as we go through the day tomorrow, here comes the humidity. So as the moisture kind of fills back in here, more likely something is going to reach the ground. That's going to be the situation going into again Thursday with a lot more humidity around here. And uh, yeah, we've got quite a system coming on in the West Coast as of right now. This is going to help to pull down as this works its way across the country. It's going to be tapping into some of that colder air up there to the north of us. And that's what's going to be pulled down with the next front, which moves through late Thursday. 60 at noon today. Maybe a shower here or there. Probably not. More clouds, a shower is possible later on this afternoon, 64 degrees. So it will stay on the cool side. Back up to 70 tomorrow and then back up to 80 on Thursday and a couple of showers around Thursday. Then as the front approaches, maybe even a few thunderstorms, especially later on Thursday. And then once that front comes through, Right now, I'm thinking it's going to be one of those upside down days. 55 early on, down to 50 in the afternoon. Very windy on Friday. 40 Saturday morning. We stay in the 50s on Saturday. I'm leaning toward the colder side on Sunday with showers around here. That's going to be a good day to catch up on all those movies you want to watch on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple of showers on Saturday, but especially Sunday into Monday as well. Shut the front door. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> Monday morning. Shut yeah. the front. Yes. Keep the front door very Seriously? closed as well as the back door and all the windows. All the windows as well. And spring officially starts here in like a Monday. week. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Ain't going ain't gonna to feel like it. Ain't so. gonna, yeah. well, but I, again, think about it. I, it this, I've lived here. 28 years, mm -hmm. right? 92 on Saturday, and then we're going to be at 45 on Sunday. Welcome to San Antonio. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it, it, it never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 452, 52 degrees. And coming up before five, Hollywood is still buzzing after a historic night at the Oscars. What the winners are saying next in your morning spotlight. And the Oscar goes to. Kiwi. <laughs> People can't stop talking about the joy of watching everything everywhere all at once star Ki Hui Kwan win his first Oscar Sunday. That joy has been his trademark all season. But on the champagne carpet, he told me he wasn't so in touch with his emotions until he played his everything everywhere character, Raymond. Through him, I understand now it's okay to be vulnerable and it's okay to show weakness uh, as long as you have a, a pure and a strong heart. Uh, and that's why you see me getting so emotional this entire time because it has been a quite an emotional journey for me. It's also been an emotional journey for Ruth E. Carter, the Black Panther costume designer, winning her second Oscar Sunday night, the first black woman to ever win more than one Oscar. She told me she's proud of the progress, but... I'm really kind of tired of first because I, I like us to start saying, you know, I'm the fifth. You know, like in 2023, we're still talking about first. This is really bananas. But if it means that I do it and I push it through, I'm happy to do it. Carter dedicated the win to her mother, who died just last week. She so much as twitches. <laughs> The first season of the hit HBO series The Last of Us going out with a bang. HBO says Sunday's finale was watched by a season high of 8.2 million people, even as it went up against the Oscars. And former Oscars host Billy Crystal is 75 Tuesday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now, 456 and 52 degrees for now. Up next at 5, a 13-year-old girl found hundreds of miles from her family's home in Dallas, how she ended up in another state, and why authorities hope her story will save lives. And five years after the tragedy in Sutherland Springs, the center set up to support the community is growing. What they're looking to expand on next. We've had a good half hour. We have not spotted any traffic troubles out there. No accidents, no stalled vehicles. We'll see if that changes in the next three minutes or so. Stephen Cavazos is here this morning and we'll talk to him live coming up on GMSA. Live from Chase at 12.
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now, GMSA, a mistrial declared in a murder case that started last week over a shooting in 2021. We'll look ahead at what could happen next. Plus, the widow of a man who was killed in a vicious dog attack last month is suing the dog's owners who are still in jail. What we have uncovered in that case. In the last week or so, the weather has been on a roller coaster, and Mike says some of your friends may not ride this next coaster. It's pretty steep, got some big <laughs> drops, all that kind of stuff, so get your tickets ready. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, March 14th, trucking right along in your spring break week. That's right. Happy Tuesday. Happy <laughs> spring break. Uh, still kind of cold this morning, 52 degrees, but, I mean, that's going to change. In the next seven days, Mike says take inventory, keep mm -hmm. tabs on where your heavier coats are. Uh -huh. Yes, listen to what he says, because, uh, you know, there have been spring breaks in the past where it's been on the cooler side. Um, I don't remember the extremes like we are, will be experiencing this week because I, I keep referencing Saturday, 92 degrees. And then we do you see what's coming up this Saturday, 51 right now. So we've cooled down even more. That bottom number is at 36, the dew point. And so we've got 56% humidity. And that's very important as far as if we see any showers today, will they actually reach the ground. That's the big question. 64 for a high today. So this will be the coolest day of the kind of first half or first uh, almost two thirds of this week. The aquifer yesterday went down seven tenths of a foot and the allergens oak is still high, although it did drop down quite a bit from the previous day and there's a whole just grocery list out there of other allergens. All right, take a look at some of the temperatures around the area. Yes, it is definitely jacket weather this morning. We've got uh, some 40s in the hill country. We've got 51 here in town. Same thing at Randolph, 52 Port SA, 53 Gonzales, as well as Stinson. And again, these numbers are very low, so the air is very dry. So kind of like yesterday where we had something showing up on radar, but it's probably going to be evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. Doesn't mean you won't see a sprinkle or two. And again, we've got a lot of oak out there this morning. So here's the story. Chilly, some clouds hanging around here. So a beautiful moon spot at the uh, kind of the halfway point. It's a, a waning gibbous moon. And today we'll have a lot more in the way of clouds hanging around here than what we had yesterday. Once again, a shower is possible mid 60s. We did hit 70 yesterday. We stay cooler today. Then we start to warm up and get even warmer tomorrow and Thursday, almost downright hot on Thursday. A couple of showers, one or two of them here and there, and then a few storms as that big front approaches on Thursday. That's going to be late on Thursday. Then get ready. That cold front moves through. It is going to be windy on Friday. It is going to be cold on Friday. We're not really going to see any sunshine all weekend long, and we'll have, other than a stray shower, to a better chance of rain on Sunday. Like I was saying last half hour, all those movies you want to catch up on, maybe spring cleaning, Sunday is your day. Maybe Saturday as well. Well, details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Hitting the roads this morning. Stephen, what's going on with traffic? Good morning, Mike. Well, you know, it's been a pretty quiet morning. Spring break is here, and we know a lot of folks may have the week off, and, and maybe uh, the, you have the week off from school, but really, we're not going to see a lot of traffic. That was the same case yesterday, as you can see there at 1604 Petrenko. Now, this early in the morning, we really don't spot a whole lot of issues out there. We did have some of them that were reported overnight earlier. Those issues have already cleared out, and you can see things are in the clear at 10 at Hebner, as we have maybe a few folks getting on by. But let's get you to the map, and it's the same story here. Plenty of green, still lots of construction to talk about, but we do notice that there's a small stretch of red that's right here along I-10 eastbound as you approach FM 1518. Now, as of this hour, there's nothing being reported, but we're going to have to keep a very close eye on it. I-10 is one of those areas where the trans guide cameras can be a little bit spotty, but we'll find out what's going on there and give you those, that information as the morning does progress. But hopefully, we'll see that area stretch out to more green in the next few minutes or so. I-10 westbound, though, if you are traveling in the westbound lanes from Seguin, it's still in the green with 30 minutes, about 33 minutes if you're traveling along 87 northbound and coming in from Lavernia. And for our friends down in Floresville, it should take you about 27 minutes to get to the downtown area. But back here, 281 and Hildebrand here in town, things have been quiet. Um, don't really expect to see a whole lot of congestion out there, just again because it is spring break, but we will have construction going on, road closures, and it does look like a stall vehicle may have been reported there at 90 at General McMullen. We'll find out what's going on there and give you those updates coming up a little later on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. And as Mike hinted, uh, in the last half hour, construction projects continue along North St. Mary Street. That means you can expect some detours if you're driving in the area. Right now, alternating lanes on North St. Mary's will be closed from East Mistletoe to East Woodlawn. The closure will run through this Saturday, March 18th. We'll have the full construction and closure schedule posted for you right now on KSAT.com. 
New details in that deadly dog attack in a West San Antonio neighborhood. The widow of the 81 year old man who was killed is now suing for negligence. The lawsuit states she is seeking $1 million. Ramon Najera died on February 24th in that attack on Depla Street. Court records show Juanita Najera is suing the dog's owners, Christian Moreno and Aveline Schneider, as well as the homeowner, Carlos Moreno. The suit claims each person failed to stop the dogs during the attack, failed to keep the dogs inside the home, along with preventing them from escaping the home, and failed to have them leashed or tethered. Visitation services will be held for Ramon this Wednesday followed by the funeral on Thursday. After two days and over 14 hours of deliberations, a jury deadlocked and a mistrial was declared in the murder trial of Luis Alvarado. Alvarado was charged in September of 2021 for allegedly shooting and killing his neighbor, Santos Cedillo. Prosecutors say Alvarado got into an argument with Cedillo outside the apartment complex they lived at. The defense argued Alvarado feared for his life and wanted to be left alone. The district attorney's office could retry the case, but no word if that will happen. More than five years after the tragedy in Sutherland Springs, the center is set up to support the mental health needs of the community is expanding. The Center for Healing and Hope of South Texas offers a variety of counseling services. The Ecumenical Center opened this location in La Vernia after the 2017 shooting at the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs that left 26 people dead. Behind the main building, another building is under construction. At one time, it was just a work shed. Now it will give them room to expand and help more people with individual and group counseling. We can bring down the barriers to care and we can bring the services closer to the people who need them. They're gonna be more willing to come in and take advantage of that. Now Fisk tells us that the center's mission is simple, bring healing and hope to those who need it. They hope to have the construction done within a month and grand reopening to unveil the new structure to the community they serve. As we move through the early part of spring break, upper respiratory viruses, stomach viruses, strep throat and rashes, all common illnesses that pediatricians are warning parents about as families head to crowded parks. University Health System expects doctor visits to be on the rise at the end of spring break week or the start of next week when kids go back to school. Many of the virus spread through surfaces that are touched and then kids put their hands on their face. They are warning families to think about ways to offset the risks of going to big crowds or places that are touch sensory oriented. I am a parent to a toddler, so we want to, you know, go out as much as possible. We have her in little gym classes where she's constantly touching things, but you kind of have to think about, you know, what you want to do for fun and kind of the benefits and the risks of going out. That doctor says keep hand sanitizer and wipes handy. She says it might not be a bad idea to consider wearing masks if you're going to a place that's super crowded. In the upcoming warmer months, she said you can expect to see a rise in hand, foot, and mouth disease making a comeback in kits. Time now, 508 and 51 degrees for now. Still ahead before 530, Amazon's Alexa offering some help to fill out your March Madness bracket. We'll tell you how that works coming up. And after the break, a missing 13-year-old from Texas found alive a thousand miles from home. The story and warning that investigators want every parent to hear. Outside with live cam, clear and cool this morning. Mike says we could see a stray shower today. We'll tell you when, what that chance of rain is coming up right here on GMSA. This morning, a teen from Texas has been found in North Carolina, locked in a shed by a man she reportedly met online. ABC's Lionel Moyes reports on this case and a warning about human trafficking cases nationwide. This morning, a missing 13-year-old is home safe with her family, rescued near Charlotte, North Carolina, more than a thousand miles away from her home in Texas. It was hard, heartbroken, very scared for her life. The teen's mom says her daughter met the alleged abductor, 34-year-old Jorge Camacho, playing video games online, and they communicated on a nap for months. Content of the, the chat was consistent with uh, grooming and enticement, and he enticed her to actually leave the home where he picked her up. Investigators believe he picked up the teen to traffic her for sex. Kids come missing and they're being sold. And we knew that she had left this person that we never met from the internet. 
we fear the wor worst. The FBI Violent Crime Task Force in Texas, coordinated with the sheriff in Davidson County, North Carolina, quickly zeroing in on where they believed she was. Finding the teen locked in this green shed, video shows the conditions inside. The property owner saying she had no idea someone was in her shed. I didn't see her inside my house, on the camera. I didn't know she was even here. This case, another example of the rising problem of human trafficking. Of the more than 365,000 children who were missing in 2020, it's estimated 30% were actively trafficked. Last month, eight girls, including a runaway from Arizona, were rescued in a human trafficking bust in California. Parents are urged to be attentive to their kids' online activity. That's how these things happen, is not being supervised, and these kids are very sharp. Camacho is charged with several felonies, including child abduction, human trafficking, and statutory rape. He's being held on a $1.2 million bond. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. 513, 51 degrees. Coming out, Google is launching its latest feature update for Pixel phones. Why, they're saying it will make night pictures look better than ever. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. But firefighters entering a burning house will one day save time when lives are on the line. Visualizing a patient's most recent scan will help speed up decision making in the ER. And while the woolly mammoth is still extinct, that doesn't mean students can't take field trips to visit them. The metaverse may be virtual, but the impact will be real. Suffering from sinus congestion, especially at night? Try Vix Sinex for instant relief that lasts up to 12 hours. Vix Sinex targets congestion at the source, relieving nasal congestion and sinus pressure by reducing swelling in the sinuses. Try Vix Sinex. Think he's posting about all that ancient Roman coinage? No. He's making real time money moves with Merrill. So no matter what the market's doing, he's ready. And that's how you collect coins. Your money never stops working for you with Merrill, a Bank of America company. This morning, Google is launching its latest feature update for Pixel devices. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, new features for Google Pixel phones. The camera on the Pixel 6 includes faster night sight. It's for capturing those low light photos. The update also makes Magic Eraser available to all Pixel phones. The Pixel now has Health Connect for storing health related apps already built in. And Sony is introducing a point and shoot camera this summer for the visually impaired. It is a two part system. One is a cyber shot camera and the other is a viewfinder with retinal laser projection that sends a digital image to the user's retina. It's going to cost you about 600 bucks. And Alexa can now help you enjoy March Madness. Listen to this. Amazon has launched an interactive bracket for the NCAA men's basketball tournament on Fire TV. You just say, Alexa, fill in my bracket, and it pops up. You do have to pick the teams yourself, but then you can share your progress on social media. Happy March Madness. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. The answer to the question <laughs> is no, Mike. Not everybody can fill out their own bracket. I would love to have that kind of help. Right? Yeah, yeah. That'd be nice. What I don't do follow all the teams. You follow it way more than a lot of us. I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, nowhere near as much. But that's the, the great thing, though. I mean, you could just, like, blindly pick because, you know, the upsets and what's so oh, sure. fun yeah. about the, the March Madness. Well, a lot of folks pick based on uniforms. I like these. They're uniforms, <laughs> right? I like is the colors that, of that team. Some, exactly. Sometimes. So let's just go with so, it. Sometimes, yeah. So we don't, need, we don't need Alexa's help every day. Yeah. All right. How but, are we looking, Steve? Well, hopefully you, need, you won't need my help too much today because there's not a lot of traffic out there, but we're still going to get you through it. Let's take a quick look around town. Uh, we do have a stall vehicle reported here off US 90. You see that uh, driver has the hazard lights on and obviously uh, 90 is one of those areas where we tend to see a lot of traffic build up. So what we're looking at there is a view of the westbound lanes. Uh, if you're heading out toward Castroville, you may see that fl those flashing lights. So remember, move over or slow down. It is very dark out there. And of course, traffic in the eastbound lanes looks to be picking up just a little bit more now, but really no major issues are being reported. Watch out again. US 90 westbound is where that stall vehicle has been reported. Again, not causing major problems, but we will keep a very close eye on that. Check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway. Uh, 
do want to take a drive back over here to I-10 eastbound here, FM 15. Now, unfortunately, our friends at Transguide are not able to get us a view of the conditions out there, but you can see that slowdown we talked about is slowly improving. We're now at 25 miles per hour, so traffic's getting a little bit better out there, but still pretty slow. Giving you a wide look at the map, again, the story will really be construction at this hour. And as a friendly reminder, if you are traveling along 281 a little bit later, you will see some paving work take place. That begins at 9 in the morning and should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. That's when we will see a closure of the westbound lanes near Bolverde Road. But you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic. There is a full list of closures there, so we know it's spring break, and there is that QR code. Very helpful. Scan the QR code that takes you directly to our ksat traffic page, and we have a full list of closures on that page. But as I mentioned, it is spring break, so a lot of folks are off, but those textile crews are working hard to improve the roadways, Mike. Hopefully they do that safely as well. Thank you very much. All right. I haven't personally seen any blue bonnets so far this season, so I love these pictures, and that is great. Wish my yard looked like that. Oh, that's so pretty. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture there. Keep sending in those pictures. We got a bunch of beautiful ones coming up throughout the rest of the show. All right. We've got mostly clear skies right now and very dry air because you can see how distinct all the lights are off there in the distance. 51 degrees. We're slightly below normal right now. Mid 40s in the hill country. 53 at Stinson. Dry air. This is important as far as well. Not only is it comfortable out there, but as far as if we see any sprinkles, any showers trying to pop up, which I've got that in the forecast. A lot of it may evaporate before it reaches the ground later on today. We'll have more clear skies or just partly cloudy skies this morning. And then the clouds are going to continue to fill in. And again, there's that 10% chance for, yeah, a stray shower just kind of popping up here. There, we're going to be up to 60 at noon, and then 64 high temperature today. Yesterday was 70, slightly below normal. Today, well below normal, almost by a good 10 degrees, basically. And then we're going to start to warm up over the next couple of days. All right, here's uh, one of the long-range computer models. A lot of clouds hanging around today. This one doesn't even really pick up any little sprinkly showers, but there will be one or two of them out there today. Pretty much same thing tomorrow. A shower scattered about here or there. A few more then on Thursday and then throughout the afternoon hours. And now again, this kind of broad brushes things, but there's a better chance of having a couple of stray showers around the area on Thursday. That's going to be the warm day. Then as we go into the nighttime hours, this is when in the overnight hours when the front moves on through here and that's going to touch off some uh, potentially strong thunderstorms that'll kind of hightail it and get out of here fairly quickly. Storm Prediction Center already has us in the isolated and even a couple of scattered potentially severe storms with hail and high winds being the biggest threats and most of that's going to be further off to the northeast, but um, a good chunk of our area will have some of those scattered storms around potentially severe storms. Now, here's what it looks like with temperatures. Like I said, we continue to warm up the next couple of days and then the bottom drops out a 30 degree temperature difference on Friday compared to Thursday. And I think actually Friday is going to be an upside down day. We'll be warmer early in the morning and then get continually cooler. And look at those low temperatures. Yeah, it's going to be cold this weekend. Cold, windy on Friday, and I don't know what's worse, windy and cold or wet and cold, because wet and cold on Sunday. All right, forecast today, 60. May again, maybe a shower here or there. We'll see the clouds increase throughout the day. 64 for a high temperature today, a shower or two. Same thing tomorrow, but it will be warmer tomorrow. Still keep a lot of clouds around here. Plenty of clouds on Thursday and a better chance for a few showers during the day on Thursday. Then as that front moves through, we will have some of those uh, thunderstorms. Some could be on the strong, potentially severe side. And boy, oh boy, that is a front and then some because temperatures will drop throughout the day. Friday, 50 by late in the afternoon. Uh -huh. um, mid fit, you know, some computer models kind of going back and forth. One thing overall, it's going to be cold. Cold. Some have us a, not quite as cold. Some have us a little bit colder, but cold and then especially wet on Sunday. So the leprechaun needs his top hat and his jacket. <laughs> a, heavy, yeah. a heavy green jacket. Yes. Hang, yeah. Hang, hang on that and then keep and then the umbrella by Sunday. So. You'll be dancing a jig just to but, stay warm. But then the nice thing, what it's shaping up to look like is maybe Sunday money. We have a little period of some steady rain. That okay. would be wonderful. Good okay. payoff. It's cold, but yeah. All right. For, and if it's after spring break for most folks, even better. We're okay with that. Yep. Right. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. 523, 51 degrees. Up next before 530, some of Hollywood's brightest stars are trying out some new projects. That's coming up in your morning spotlight. In your morning spotlight, stars of the biggest movie theaters and the hottest shows in streaming have new projects. 
CNN's David Daniel has the details in today's Hollywood Minute. To catch a grandma, you have to think like a grandma. Think. What would grandma do? Pedro Pascal, detective, the star of The Mandalorian and The Last of Us gets his gumshoe on in promos for the latest version of the popular mobile game Merge Mansion. Pascal plays the game's detective Tim Rockford, teasing the mystery at the Bolton family mansion. The Merge Mansion update is set for March 28th. Sometimes I can feel the sky as it rotates. It scatters my thoughts. God. Melissa Barrera from In the Heights and Scream 6 stars in All the World is Sleeping, about mothers, daughters, and generational addiction. The New Mexico nonprofit Bold Futures NM developed the film, working with women living the realities of substance abuse, trauma, and parenting. All the World is Sleeping opens in theaters and on digital platforms Friday. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now, 527 and 51 degrees for now. Still to come at 530 on GMSA. Spring break is here and so are the crowds. But local businesses tell us they're happy to see it. Why they're not scared of any long lines. And RJ Marcus is back to show us the latest and greatest tech that's being shown off at South by Southwest. We're going to hear from him in the next half hour. This morning on GMSA, fallout continues after the Silicon Valley bank collapse. What the Federal Reserve is doing now to strengthen America's faith in our banking system. Let's look out there with live cam starting spring break Tuesday at 51 degrees. And you know what? We're going to have to dust off maybe even the heavier jackets for later on. 531. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. It is March 14th. One of our interns, Sarah's in the studio right now. Hey, Sarah. Good morning. We don't need coffee from you. We're, we're going to get coffee for you. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's how it you works up. now yes. in 2023. Yes. So we'll all get you the coffee. Okay? So what are you waiting that's on? Fantastic. What am I waiting on? Oh, yeah. I've got to do chop, this chop. first. Good morning, everybody. Oh, okay. Good morning. Okay. Steph right. can handle it. Go, yeah. go get yeah. Sir coffee. I'll get her coffee. Traffic's not too bad. There'll be a gaping hole in the desk, and that would look no. weird. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll get you in a minute. Don't worry. <laughs> Do you you know over? All right, let's see, <laughs> see how that looks. So, okay. All right. Um, now, as, uh, far as weather is concerned this morning. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're on it, Sarah. <laughs> Mark, why'd you walk back to the desk? Keep going. <laughs> anyway, uh, beautiful morning. Grab a jacket before you head out the door because uh, temperatures are definitely on the, uh, the coolish side, but down to about normal. And uh, 36 degrees is the dew point temperature. So a big difference, a good 15 degrees difference between those two. So we do have this very dry air down here at the surface. And again, that's going to come into play as far as any showers that may try and pop up. Some may evaporate before they reach the ground. And rain's not a big deal today. 10% chance that's going to be about it. Uh, 40s in the Hill Country, 47 at Skeen, 51 in Gonzales, 53 right now at Stinson. Again, everybody's got really dry air. It's really comfortable out there, and that's what's along with the clear skies. Temperatures to drop down. Oak is on the high side. A little bits of everything else. The updated count is going to be coming up in a, a couple of hours. 60 today at noon, 64 for high temperature. So we will be cooler than yesterday. This is the coolest day of the first half of the week or first two thirds of the week going back to Saturday. We're 92 have been getting lower and lower each and every day and then we'll start to go back up as we go into Thursday and then get ready because the bottom's going to be dropping out after that by Friday and going into the weekend. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authority. So you said not much going on out there. Sarah? Yeah, not much going on, but you know what? Sarah is here to help me out. So much appreciated, Sarah, but let's get a quick look here. A good update 90 at General McMullen. We did have a stall vehicle that was reported out there earlier. Now uh, there were some flashing lights, which means a text dot hero truck may have all already arrived to help that driver out. So better news to report there along 90. Now remember, this was along 90 westbound as you approach General McMullen. Wasn't really causing a whole lot of issues for drivers, but something that is a friendly reminder, if you had any big road plans or road trips planned for the week, Make sure to check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway. Wide look at the metropolitan area, plenty of green and still a lot of construction out there. And really, that will be the big talking point, at least for right now and as, as long as it stays quiet. Uh, but the good news is it's quiet if you are traveling in from any of these communities to the Alamo City. Pretty pleasant along I-37 northbound with about 28 minutes if to the Alamo City. 30 minutes along US 90 eastbound traveling in from Castro. That's the usual drive time there. And that arrival from Lionel should take you about 16 minutes along I-35 
five northbound. But let's get one last look there. 90 at General McMullen. A better shot. Traffic is moving pretty steady at this hour. We'll continue to watch things closely. And as always, make sure you do the same. Mark, Steph. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man who was on his way to work this morning has ended up at a hospital instead. San Antonio police say he was robbed and shot outside his northeast side home. Katrina Weber's live in the Northern Hills neighborhood near Thousand Oaks in Ur Lane. Is the victim okay, Katrina? Well, police were not uh, able to give us an exact condition on him, but they did tell us that he was shot in his shoulder and is being treated at a hospital. It happened right here uh, in his garage about 4 o'clock this morning. They, police say he was on his way to work when two men came up and robbed him. Let me give you a look at the video so you can see uh, as police were investigating here earlier this morning. Uh, they say they got the call to this uh, garage. Now, the house is actually on a street called Sand Trap, but the garage faces Ur Lane near Thousand Oaks. So uh, they, they say that the man told them that he was on his way to work. He had just opened his garage when two men walked up, demanded his property, took off with his wallet and keys, but not before they shot him in his shoulder. Uh, they say that there was a little bit of a language barrier, so they were not able to get all of the details. Uh, police did not have a description of the two robbers, but uh, they say that that man, again, was taken to a hospital and is being treated. They say he appears to be in his 50s. Uh, police were here for a while collecting evidence. They had some markers on the ground where they marked off evidence, but uh, as far as we know, they have not made any arrests just yet. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Happening today, the feds are working to ease Americans' fears of a financial collapse after two banks failed over the weekend. In an address Monday, the president told the nation America's banking system remains secure. John Lawrence reports. The Federal Reserve is placing Silicon Valley Bank under the microscope. I've lived through a lot of crises, and it, it, it's very easy to know what went wrong the day after the crisis is over. It's very difficult to know what's going wrong before, it, before you have the crisis. Michael Barr, the Fed's vice chair for supervision, is leading the probe, which will focus on how regulators, including some Feds, miss the financial storm. We feel like it's, it wasn't our responsibility as depositors to maintain faith in the bank, but it should be the bank's responsibility through sound judgment to take care of the funds that we deposited with them, in which Silicon Valley Bank failed to do so. The Fed's review is scheduled to be publicly released May 1st. We'll learn a lot more facts and we'll have a lot more opinions of what happened. And I guarantee you that we will regulate for whatever went wrong this time. But next time it will be something different. President Joe Biden outlined his plan to contain the collapse on Monday, but some customers still made a bank run. We have an obligation with payroll. We have an electrical business and we have to meet payroll. Meanwhile, lawmakers are calling for action. For us in Congress, we need to revisit some of the regulation that was loosened on these regional mid-sized banks uh, not so long ago. I certainly opposed that loosening at the time. I'm John Lawrence reporting. In your morning headlines, Mexico's president says this country is safer than the United States. President Lopez Obrador says in part, quote, there is no issue with traveling safely through Mexico. His comments come after the kidnapping of four Americans, two of which were killed while three other women disappeared after crossing the U.S.-Mexico border two weeks ago. On Friday, the Texas Department of Public Safety advised people not to travel to Mexico at all for spring break. Meanwhile, President Biden has approved a controversial oil dr drilling project in Alaska. Biden gave the green light to the ConocoPhillips Willow project on Monday. Supporters say it's a much needed source of revenue and jobs for the area. However, climate groups argued it will pose health and environmental risk with its carbon pollution. And a man lucky to be alive after being bitten by a zebra he owns. A zebra nearly took off his arm in the shocking attack. 17-year-old Ronald Clifton was found by first responders lying on the ground bleeding with the zebra appearing aggressive. When the zebra approached officers aggressively, one of the, them fired a shot and killed it. The injured man is listed in fair condition in the hospital. Right now, 538, 51 degrees. And still to come at 530, spring break crowds are here and that has local businesses celebrating why they're not scared of those long lines. Up next, a lot of people use reusable bags to help the environment. Why experts say it might not make a difference. And let's look out there with live cam. A little bit of something for everybody. We have cool, we have hot, we have it all. And we're gonna be checking with Mike again very soon. 
Welcome back. It's 541 in your morning consumer headlines. Consumers are expecting to see inflation come down within the next year. New Federal Reserve Bank data says consumers believe they will see relief on prices for food, rent, medical care and gas. However, officials want inflation rate expectations to be anchored at roughly 2 percent, which is the Fed's target rate for actual inflation. People who use reusable bags to reduce the environmental impact of plastic bags, of course. But however, our new report says cloth or thick plastic reusable bags may actually have a much higher carbon footprint than common plastic shopping bags. A UN report found a thick plastic bag must be used an estimated 10 to 20 times in order to make a difference compared to one single use plastic bag. And a report from Denmark says a cotton bag had to be used more than seven thousand times to make it truly an environmentally friendly alternative. Time now 542 and 51 degrees for now. Up next RJ Marquez is back to show us the latest and greatest tech being shown off <laughs> at South by Southwest in Austin. Welcome back 545. We just want to know where this is because that water looks Amazing. Spring break <laughs> is here and so are the crowds. That's right. Garrett Berger talked with businesses who are happy to welcome back those visitors. You can't forget the Alamo when you're talking about San Antonio tourism. Management here expecting a busy week and so are restaurants down on the Riverwalk. We arrived down there today a little after prime lunchtime hours when there were plenty of empty seats. But businesses told us the weekend had already been especially busy. That was good news for Rita's on the River, which had closed for 26 months during the pandemic, finally reopening last May. Its owner says Saturday night was a record for the year, and he's enjoying seeing everyone out for a proper spring break again. It's fantastic. You know, it's, it's so great, to, especially being closed all this time. It's really, really great to be to be open and seeing people on the Riverwalk and people uh, enjoying themselves and just out in the sunshine. Other restaurants we talked to also expressed optimism that things are getting back to normal after the pandemic. Seeing as March means money for San Antonio's tourism industry, that's a big relief for them. Here at the Alamo, management says that they had about 11,000 timed entry tickets claimed for the church alone, and that doesn't include the rest of the grounds or their new collection center. Downtown, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Last year, nearly 25,000 people visited the Creative Tech Expo at South by Southwest in Austin. And this year, conference organizers are bracing for even bigger crowds. More than two dozen countries and hundreds of companies are represented in downtown Austin. RJ Marquez is one of the thousands enjoying all the innovation, and he takes us to the international event. South by Southwest 2023 is underway right up 35 here in downtown Austin. This is my first time checking out South by Southwest, so I'm really excited to show you all the cool things that this event has to offer, including the Creative Tech Expo right behind me, where this event attracts companies from around the world. Let's take you inside to show you what it's all about. So much innovation and new concepts. I feel like after the pandemic, everybody was kind of like shooken up and didn't know what was next. And this is kind of showing us, oh my gosh, there is good stuff coming still. So there's all sorts of innovative tech on display, including this hologram live stream. Work with an event company, so I like all new tech, uh, like big trends and inspirational uh, speakers and keynotes. So yeah, I'm here to discover. And one of the coolest part about the tech experience here at South by Southwest are these immersive activations like the one behind me. Check this out. This is a 7.14 surround sound experience at the Dolby Lounge, which puts you right at the center of music. And for more information on all things South by Southwest and the conference, head over to KSAT.com. And don't forget to check out our live streams on our KSAT YouTube page. Reporting from Austin, RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. All right, so as RJ just said, for all the things South by Southwest, head to KSAT.com. And don't forget to check out the live streams from the events on the KSAT YouTube page. Time now, 548. It looks kind of quiet out there on the roadways. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. You know, I'm a little jealous of RJ. He's got a great gig, uh, but he has been doing everything lately. Covered traffic for me last week and went to Austin over the weekend. So big shout out to him. Uh, but you know what? The drive's not going to look too bad if he's coming along 35, at least right now, this early in the morning. I don't think he's up. But for the most uh, part, we're taking a look at a lot of quiet roadways. And that has really been uh, what we have been seeing over the last uh, two days or so because it is spring break. Really don't anticipate a lot of congestion out 
out there, but we know some folks still have to head to work a little bit later this morning. So let's show you the map and really it's still the same story here, guys. Lots of green on the screen. We did have a little bit of a slowdown along I 10 uh, out towards 1604 on the far east side as well as a stall vehicle. But other than that, it's just remained pretty quiet out on the roadway. So it gives us some time to talk about some construction here. So plan ahead because we have some sign replacement taking place off Loop 410 on the south side of San Antonio that actually will start tomorrow night and that will take us to March 16th begins at nine in the evening and hopefully that will wrap around five in the morning. We'll see a full closure of the eastbound main lanes right there from Villa Main to Southton Road, so you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic. There is a full list of closures there, but back here in town 410 at Jackson Keller, things are just moving along without any trouble. Uh, thankfully, wow, that's a really distorted shot there. I'm not sure what's going on with that <laughs> shot. There you go. There you go. A little yeah. better, <laughs> better view there at 410 and uh, I at Loop 410 at New Braunfels. It must be like sunspots or something. Yeah. Inter uh, interrupting our signal. No. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> you never know these days. You never know these Thank days. You. Yeah, yeah, they're, you they're on spring break as well. Yeah. The cameras. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. It is going to be warming up. We were hot. It's cool. It's going to warm up, and then it's going to get cold. Right. So it's basically a little bit of everything. We need, kind of need a, a flow chart. For, sort of like this, right? That's yeah. called the seven day. And I'm going to show you that in a <laughs> second. First of all, take a look. I love this picture. Our, one of our regulars, Yvonne. And boy. Busy B. Yeah, he is definitely hard at work there on that beautiful blue bonnet. Gorgeous picture. And remember, if there are bees around, just leave them alone because they pollinate everything out there. So thanks very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. I wonder if she got that closer, just a really, really good lens on that camera. But boy, it's a great picture. It almost looks like a painting. All right, we've got uh, mostly clear skies right now. Low humidity, and one way to, to see that is looking at the lights out there in the distance along the horizon. They're nice and uh, crisp and twinkly. And 45 at Comfort, 48 Bandera, 51 New Braunfels, and Randolph at the airport, Port SA at 52 degrees. And we are going to have a little more in the way of some clear skies this morning. Should be a decent sunrise, few clouds out there. We'll drop down a couple of more degrees in the next few hours down to 48. The normal low is low 50s right now, so we are going to still be slightly below normal, uh, but not that far. I mean, this is what you would expect in the middle of March, and then we'll see the clouds increase throughout the day. 10% chance for a couple of little sprinkly showers out there, but the air is so dry right now that much of that is uh, more than likely going to evaporate before it reaches the ground. We'll make it up to 64 later on today, so we are going to be cooler than yesterday's 70. This will be the coolest day. And then, like I said, things are going to start to warm back up before the bottom drops out throughout the rest of today. Lots of clouds, maybe a sprinkle here or there. I kind of doubt it, though, but at least there's that small chance for it. And then tomorrow, roughly the same situation. Notice how these wind lines, though, are starting to come in here out of the southeast. That's going to increase the humidity tomorrow than going into Thursday. So better chance of rain on Thursday. This is kind of a broad brush painted in there, but uh, with all the humidity around here, anything that does pop up will definitely reach the ground. So we'll have a few scattered showers around throughout the day on Thursday. And then we go into Thursday night. And that's when we're going to see some thunderstorms along the front that moves on through here. And some of those could be on the potentially strong side. Storm Prediction Center does have us with a uh, isolated couple of scattered potentially strong storms around the area. And that's going to be late Thursday, early Friday. Once again, brutally cold temperatures up to the north. And we are going to get a little taste of that as we come on in here. Here's the outlook for the uh, severe threat on Thursday. Again, isolated to some scattered uh, potentially severe storms. Most of those will be up to the uh, northeast of us, but they're still going to be sort of under the gun in the overnight hours. All right, here's what's going on today. 60 at noon, a shower, just a mention of it. Same thing later on this afternoon, but odds of rain are not that great. Then we go into tomorrow, maybe a shower or two kind of hanging around here. Not a great chance of it. And Thursday, a better chance for a few showers. Then we get into Thursday night. The front moves on through few thunderstorms are going to be sparked up as well. Hail would be the biggest threats with that and some stronger winds. Then the front moves through. Temperatures drop from the morning into the afternoon. I'm 50 by the afternoon here in town, which means only 40s in the hill country. Very windy on Friday. Lots of clouds. Cold on Saturday. Cold and wet on Sunday as well as on Monday. I'm glad I have my jackets out. First day of spring Monday, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriate. Welcome to spring. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mike. By 53, 51 degrees. Just ahead, Fiesta is coming up fast, and how you can get tickets today for the Battle Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau parades with some help from KSAP.
We are getting closer to Fiesta, and if you're planning ahead, you can get your tickets now to join our KSAT Fiesta viewing parties for Battle of Flowers and the Fiesta Flambeau Parades. Tickets for both events are on sale now. Battle of Flowers Daytime Parade is on April 28th, and the Fiesta Flambeau Night Parade is on the 29th. If you buy your KSAP Fiesta party tickets, you get assigned grandstand seating to watch the parade, two tacos and one drink, a chance to meet some of your favorite KSAP personalities, and a chance to experience a live broadcast. To find out more about how to get those tickets, head over to KSAT.com. It is a very exciting time of year for Texans because blue bonnets are popping up along gardens and highways everywhere across our great state. Of course, it's the state flower of Texas and you're urged not to pick them if you can. We are encouraging you to take pictures of blue bonnets and share them with us through KSAT Connect. You can see other blue bonnet sightings right now over at KSAT.com. Tuesday morning right now it's 557 and we're looking at Transguide right now. Some folks hit the road. The rest of you are off this week and the weather is kind of all over the place right now. We'll get an update from Mike and from Stephen coming up.